Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast. And this here is episode 99. That's right. 99 episodes. Not bad. Hmm? At about approximately an average of 20 minutes each one. Um, how's my math? What was that? 30 hours? Pretty good. Hopefully a good portion or any portion at all <laughs> um, helped you guys out with something. Uh, maybe enlightened you, made you think about something. If I was able to teach you anything, um, if I was able to make you aware of something you weren't aware of before, or at the very least, if I was able to entertain you, which at this point, these days, with all the shit that, that's going on, that might be the most important. Was I able to entertain you in any way? I hope so. And if I haven't, well, I'm going to continue to try. So, it's, I guess for me, it's a beautiful night. It's cool. However, it is raining. And I was going to stand out in the stoop. Um, but we get all these these bugs that kind of congregate underneath my porch. And it was so funny is I have one of those yellow lights, those yellow bulbs that's supposed to deflect the bu- bugs. Like the bugs are not supposed to go over there. But I don't know. It might be running out of yellow because they're there. There's no mosquitoes. It's those big crazy bugs. Um... I forgot the name of them, man. The ones with the real long ass legs and the. They look like mosquitoes. Like a lot of people uh, confuse them for mosquitoes. I did for a long time. I think it was my nephew that told me that they weren't mosquitoes. In fact, he told me that they were actually good bugs. Like they did something. I forgot what he told me they did. Killed ins- other insects. I don't know. Killed snakes. Uh delivered messages I don't know what they did but they did something special um so what I did instead though it's raining it's really not that bad it's drizzling it's very 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 light um I grabbed my big old umbrella and I'm out in the driveway so uh this podcast is being brought to you in the rain (laughs) from the rain uh, it was a good day today. Uh, this morning I did a pretty cool podcast. I mean, uh, not the podcast, uh, TikTok. So a lot of you guys have hit me up. I mean, I got, oh, the views that I received on TikTok were like almost 4,000 views, like in like an hour's time or so on. So I think it was probably uh, my best one yet. And what was so funny is that one, um, was a spare in the moment. That was not the one I intended on doing this morning. But when I saw it, I was like, oh, I gotta do this one. And all of a sudden I had the idea and I did it and I think it came out great. <laughs> Those seem to be the ones that really work for me, the ones that are pretty spontaneous. The ones that I plan a lot, like I sleep on, a lot of times I don't even do those. Cause I sleep on them and I have all these ideas on how to shoot them and where the angles and what should I wear and da 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 da. But then I don't do them. So I don't know what that's about. Uh, writing, just some writing. Um, still chugging away at uh, book two. Um, again, the books are done. I'm just, I got this time. I mean, right now, uh, the books at the printer and they're not being printed yet. So, um, and I reached out to the people and I asked them, 
would I have time to update? They say, yeah, they will let me know. So that what happens is now, since the manuscripts are there already, the covers are there, everything's there, um, <clears throat> all I have to do is, and that's the beauty of uh, email and this day of uh, transferring documents, I can just send them an updated version. It, nothing's being changed, just so you guys know. The book is still the original book that I wrote. Uh, but um, also, I clean up some of the typos or some of the grammars that some of the things that I overlook. It happens. Uh, so the, the beauty of my publishing um, is I don't use a professional editor. And I spoke about that at one point. Um, I personally feel that um, if you're not with a legitimate, uh, I'm not going to say legitimate because they're not even legitimate anymore. I'm talking about traditional publishers. Um, I think self-publishing right now, nowadays, is more legitimate than a traditional one. Um, uh, but unless you're with a company that wants to, who's, who already paid X amount of money in advance, in advances to you as a writer, they're going to make sure that those editors, those in-house editors are doing their job, you know, um, before they, um, they release the book. But if you're self-published, you're going to end up with an editor the way I did. Unless you, you know the person uh, personally, um, and they can really bring your voice to life. That's the key. They have to know your voice. They have to be able to, if you got slang, or if you have a certain rhythm, or if you purposely mispronounce words because that's just the way they're pronounced, then they need to they need to leave it like that you know if a if a sentence goes in a dialogue let's say and the guy goes i want to go to the store well that wanna should be w-a-n-n-a not want to and that's what happens when you get um a publisher and you pay them to uh to come in and uh, publish your book, they 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 want to make it look good because they want to get that money and they charge a lot. A thousand dollars very easy for a book. A thousand easy. I paid nine hundred mine, but thousand is easy. And they'll hold on to it for about two three weeks. And it, I ber I personally feel that it's not like they're working on your book for two or three weeks. It feels like they're just sitting on it, and then like the day before they're supposed to turn it back in. Then they sit down and they go through it. That's what I feel. And I feel they use a lot of, uh, like the programs out there that catch misspells or catch bad grammar. And I think they just go by that. They don't actually read the book. I don't believe that. Sorry. I could be wrong, but I don't believe that. So, uh, so that's what I'm doing. I'm just making sure that uh, the grammar is the way I want it. And it gives me, it gave me a little bit more time, so this, this is good. Remember, it's three books, so it's a lot. There's a lot of information in there. I just want to make sure, and I want to make sure the the chapters flow together the right way. That's important. That's how you keep it, um, like cliffhangers. So anybody who's read Freestyle for Life, you know what I mean. So I, I always, uh, I don't end my chapters like on a down note, like the. The topic was not solved by the end of the chapter. No, it forces you into the next chapter, and that just that that uh, creates a, a page turner, which is what I'm trying to do. It's my my way of doing it. Some people do; they'll end the chapter with a conclusion. They'll have uh, the answer to your problem at the end of the chapter. Um, I don't want to do that. A lot of times, I'll. My end of my chapter will be the beginning of the next chapter. So, um, other than that, everything is same old, same old. Tomorrow we gotta uh, make a trip out to the stores. I don't want to go on a Saturday. We're gonna go real early tomorrow. I'm kind of hoping it's raining really don't like going don't think it's a good idea but we need stuff so we don't hang out we go in do what we got to do and get the hell out so and any of you guys that are going to stores i hope you're doing the same thing you know 
cover up really good. Go out there, get what you get. Get what you need and get back, you know? So, still a very dangerous uh, world right now. And uh, can't wait for it to be over. So, um, so tomorrow will be the 100th episode. I think it's incredible. I'm very excited. Um, it's a big accomplishment for me. And I'm really proud of it. I really am. It's something, it's just another something that I'm able to do, another way for me to connect with people who have been very gracious to me in my life and my career and my family and my wife and um, that's why if you notice I might I might plug a book or something but uh, I'm not bashing anyone over the head to, to sell anything I, I this is not what this is for this is 100% from me to you uh, my way of connecting with you guys and seeing if there's any questions that I can answer. Remember, I'm not there to ask the questions. So all, all I can get is, um, I could try to, you know, guess the questions. Now, on the Facebook page, um, on the Good Night Freestyle, you can, um, you can ask questions there. If it's pertaining to any individual, any particular episode, you could just post it right there in that episode. And that's good too, because in case I forgot what it was about, I can go into there and take another listen to the episode. I'll know what you're talking about and, and then I can address it on the next podcast. So always feel free to do that, guys. Um, and you'll be surprised at how many people have the same question as you do. Uh, they just... Uh, sh too shy or they just don't feel it's important enough to ask now every question every question the 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 dumbest question is the one you don't ask so every uh, every question uh, means something it's important uh, we deal with a genre of music that has sustained a lot of people and entertained a lot more so it's a real music it's a real genre it's a real business it's what I do. For those who don't know, I'm a booking agent, manager. I manage the, the original Cover Girls. I manage Little Susie. I was the one that put together the group SAL featuring uh, Susie, Angel, and Lizette Melendez. Um, uh, been doing it for a very long time. It's all I've ever done, really, per on a for professional level um, and I still have a lot of hope for the genre a lot which is why I try to keep everything I'm doing still under the freestyle banner if I didn't I would have uh, I would have left a long time ago I would have changed the names I would have gotten into something else uh, but I still have a lot of a lot of hope for the genre a lot of faith and confidence that this thing's gonna click I, I feel that What's gonna happen is, and I think the current artists, all of them, all of them, are doing an incredible job maintaining it. You see, some of you guys as fans see it so much differently than I do. I see it on a whole, from a whole other perspective. I see the potential. Remember who I deal with. I'm in the middle. I deal with the promoters. Okay, they're the actual buyers. They're the ones that call me to buy a show. Now, the reason why they buy a show, they buy an artist, book an artist, is because they feel that that artist is going to come to their venue and pull in a crowd that's going to pay a, a premium for a ticket, a ticket price, and that's how they're going to make their money. So think about that. Now, I'm an agent. Now, my my job isn't, even though. Some agents, that's all their job is, is to just, you know, track down the artists, negotiate the deal, um, handle all the money, draw up the contract, 
and um, some people that's all they do. But on an, on another on another note, with me, I also advise, and I also consult, and I want a promoter to be successful. You'll be surprised at how many promoters call me for an artist that I know damn well will do nothing. They'll do shit in their market. But the reason why they're calling me for that artist is because they are a fan themselves. And those are the worst promoters. Those are the worst promoters. Promoters need to think of their venue if they, if they want to make money. And the reason why I'm not big on those promoters that are just trying to book acts that they're a fan of is because they're going to end up doing one show, taking a hit, and never doing it again. And you know what? That's not good for me. That's not good for my artists, any of the artists. And that's not good for the fans. It look, And it looks bad for the genre because what happens? The promoters never take the blame. First thing they're going to do, oh, yeah, I brought that artist here. They, they suck, man. Nobody liked them. No, man. That's not the case. The first, the first clue, the first thing, first reason why uh, artists, uh, fans won't come to a show or uh, an audience won't come to a show, because the promoters suck. They don't know how to promote. They think, oh yeah, I'm gonna put a fly on Facebook, and everybody's gonna come. No man, that's the dumbest shit I've ever heard. Anyone doing that has no clue what they're doing, and most agents don't care. They're not going to consult. And, and a lot of reasons because they don't know. They don't know what the hell to do either. I've been around enough and long enough to see. I've seen the, perf- the successful ones and I've seen the failures. And I'm willing to share my information for free. For free. Because I have a vested interest in the genre. I do not want to see it fail. I want to see it thrive. And I believe it could thrive. You know? It's very simple. It's very simple. It's not as difficult as people think it is. But what it does take is persistence and consistency and really, really understanding the market. Really understanding the market. And that consistency is important. It's when you think you could do one or two shows and you're gonna kill it and that's it. Those are the people that fail and they make everything else look bad. Consistency, man. The fans wanna have confidence in the promoters just like they want confidence in an artist. It's hard for an artist to build a fan base with just one or two songs, really. It's hard. It's hard for them to build a strong, consistent fan base with just one or two songs. They need a little bit more than that. And if they have no more songs, the next thing that the that the, the fans are looking for are performances. How consistent are you? How often can they, if they're a fan, can they go see you at least once a year? Can they be guaranteed that? So... Same thing with the promoters. The fans want to have confidence that the promoter is not going anywhere. See, you have some artists, like freestyle artists right now, that, that like I said, do have one or two songs. Because people will come. That's why I wanted to correct this real quick. People say, yeah, but this artist has two songs, and they're pretty popular. Everybody knows, everybody likes that. Yeah, you're right. They have. Um... But they've been pretty consistent. They've been on the road. They've been in, 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 in front of everyone. But it wasn't an easy task. These artists went years and years with like no shows. They went years and years making chump change. I know. I was in the middle of a lot of those deals. I saw what it took to bring artist prices up to a certain level. Consistency, man. Keep doing it and be patient. You know, it's hard to tell some of these artists now who are in their 40s and 50s to be patient, but you'd still have to be patient because rushing it isn't going to do anything. It's going to piss you off. You know, we got, look, Stevie B is what, 62? 
63 I forgot looks good works all the time so he's got most the probably the majority of the freestyle community he probably he has them by probably 10 years so that should be inspiring enough to let us know that we have at least at the very least another good 10 years ahead and when we hit those 10 years, let's see where Stevie's at. If you ask me, he's still going to be there. He's still going to be doing a show. At that time, he'll be 73. And what would that tell us? When we're 63, that we still have another 10 years to go. You know, the artists continue to be, oh, man, we're getting old, we're getting old. Even some of the mean fans, they're not even fans, but some mean people. Oh, man. Look at the cover girls. Look how old they got. Well, <laughs> thank God. Thank God they're getting old. That means they're living. You know? Then you go and you go look at the fans' profile and you realize, hey, buddy, you've gotten old too. Yeah, but look at that artist. Oh, it's got fat. Yeah, buddy, look at you. You got fat too. <laughs> you know? So, um, but anyway. I just wanted to share that with you guys, let you know I still have a lot of confidence, a lot of faith in the genre. And if any of you, when this whole mess is over, is, are interested in making money, you might want to check out what I'm doing. Check out what I'm doing. I got a few things that can really, really open up a whole new world for so many people if they just listen. If they just listen. And... um so, anyway, hi people, I appreciate you uh, tuning in, uh, have a, a great night, nice comfortable night, prayers that everybody gets through this uh, safe and sound, and until tomorrow night, good night freestyle. Down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.